I've enjoyed uh, the, the opportunity to create legislation that will allow states to opt out of Medicaid expansion under this bill. About 30 percent of the people in South Carolina will be eligible for Medicaid in 2014 if this bill is fully implemented. It is the second largest expense in the state of South Carolina is the South Carolina's matching fund requirement. You get three federal dollars for every state dollar you put on the table to deal with Medicaid. Sounds like a good deal until Medicaid explodes in cost and becomes the number one driver of the budget in South Carolina, Wyoming, South Dakota, and Arizona. And under this bill, the problem we have today with Medicaid becomes Medicaid on steroids. And I'm confident there are plenty of Democrats who have governors uh, or Democratic governors who will say, wait a minute, before you expand Medicaid, put additional burden on my state budget. Let's see if we can find more creative ways of dealing it, dealing with it. And give people the ability to opt out of that, I think, would be just good policy. But I just want to comment very quickly about that. One rule of thumb. Any bill passed on Christmas Eve on a party line vote is probably no good for the country. That's exactly what happened in the United States Senate, as Senator McCain was saying. This is a party line vote, 60-40, on one-fifth or one-sixth of the economy. This was supposed to happen by, uh, on C-SPAN. President Obama said, I'm coming to Washington and we're going to change the way Washington works. If I had to offer Exhibit A as to what's wrong with Washington, it would be the health care, Obamacare process as well as substance. Everything that people hated about Washington resulted in this bill being passed. Absolutely no bipartisanship, behind closed door negotiations, beating people over the head to get their support, buying votes based on special interest deals for their state is, exact, is not exactly what people had in mind. And is it any surprise that something that came out of that process is going over like a lead balloon? Now, one of the problems with health care is getting doctors to take Medicare and Medicaid patients. Well, what did we do with Medicare? We took $500 billion out of a system that's $30 trillion underfunded, $500 billion out of Medicare to help the uninsured. We've got an uninsured problem, but we've got a Medicare problem that's going to be an absolute nightmare. And what I wanted to do on malpractice is to tell a doctor, if you will take a Medicare or Medicaid patient doing the country or service, and you get sued, we'll go to arbitration. Require arbitration, let the panel render their judgment, and if you want to go to court, you'll have a loser pay rule. To me, that's fair. I want people to have their chance to litigate differences when it comes to alleged medical malpractice, but I want doctors to feel like there's an incentive to serve Medicare and Medicaid patients. All I can say is that what was promised in this bill, the, 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 so, uh, the remedies to our health care system, none of them have come true, and what you see two years later are our worst fears being realized at a faster pace. We were promised, the president promised, if you like your health care, you'll be able to keep it. What's going on in the country is that employers are dropping health care for their employees because it's just cheaper to pay the fine. What's happening in this country is that uh, the idea of being able to expand Medicaid without bankrupting the budgets of this country uh, at the state level is just, you know, when you look at the consequences, it's just a nightmare in the making. We were promised that, uh, that this bill would reduce the deficit. Well, to me, health care includes doctors. And in the bill itself, we never dealt with the problem that doctors face of having their budgets, their reimbursements cut. That was not even addressed in Obamacare. That's a couple of hundred billion dollar liability. So the idea that this thing has been paid for as promised, no longer exists. It is adding to the deficit. It was projected to be $900 billion in cost. Now it's about $1.7. So the basic promises around what this bill would do for our budget, what it would do for, for uh, choices in health care, uh, have not come true. And I'm here to say to our Democratic friends, fix this before it's too late. You will find people on our side willing to meet you in the middle when it comes to reforming health care because it needs to be reformed. But the model you have created, centralized health care, that's going to damn state budgets uh, beyond belief, that's going to drive private sector insurance out of the market and is going to have a budget consequence on top of what we already have, is not the right model. So to my colleagues here today, I will work with you to do two things. 
educate the public about what awaits us if we don't change this bill quickly and work with our Democratic friends to find a better alternative. I think that's what America wants. When 67% of the people two years later feel like this is not the way to go, responsible leadership would say, let's alter course. The Supreme Court may strike down the mandate. They may say Medicaid expansion is a violation of the 10th Amendment. I hope they do, but I can say one thing with certainty. Because nine judges, five of which say it's legal to do something, doesn't make it smart to do something. What's smart is to fix health care in a sustainable way. And what's smart is for Republicans and Democrats to work together in a transparent, open fashion. And we haven't done anything smart about health care yet. I hope that changes.